and then I'll be unmuting you. And then uh, we can start. I'm seeing Jemima Angel, you're having a question. Uh, we are about to start. <laughs> yes. Jemima, you have a question? No. Okay, if you have no question, please don't raise the hand. Only raise the hand when you have uh, a question. Okay. And um, Nabudia, Retisha, you have a question. We are starting at exactly two. We are remaining. I have just. Yes. I have just I can't hear you. Navodia, I can't hear you. I have just joined. I need a link to the classroom. We are already I need a in the link classroom. to the Google Classroom. Oh, the admin, Mr. Charles, will be will be uh, sharing it. Uh, yes, uh, Elizabeth. Good afternoon, teacher. Yes, good afternoon, Elizabeth. Uh, teacher. Yeah. I want to tell me some examples of useful and harmful bacteria. Hey, examples. Okay, but we looked at that as time. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you some, okay. So uh, it is exactly two. And um, we are going to be starting. I've already told that we are using this chat for questions only. Now, there's some of you have just joined us. I'm not going to run this whole path backward. Today, the main thing is going to be about microscopy. We're going to be doing the microscope, but just to make a recap, uh, we started with the introduction. And um, I hope each one of you, of you is able to see what is on my screen. And then we looked at bios, uh, biology is the study of life. That is bios logos. Bios means life, logos means study of. Then it went on to the branches of biology. We did botany, zoology, anatomy, nutrition, physiology, uh, bacteriology. Uh, bacteriology. Now, uh, number two, Kuba has been asking me to give her some examples of, of uh, harmful bacteria. They are here. There is Streptococcus pneumoniae, the one which causes pneumonia. The Clostridium tetanus, the one which Mm -hmm. There is Salmonella typhi, the one which causes uh, typhoid. There is Vibrio cholerae, the one which causes cholera. There is Helicobacter pylori, the one which causes ulcers. So there are many, we can't finish them. And then uh, we went on to mycology, entomology, genetics, uh, taxonomy, and then we went on to life processes, as you call them, but they're actually uh, characteristics of living organisms. Uh, where I had nutrition, respiration, excretion, reproduction, movement, growth, sensitivity or irritability. And then we ended with this tool uh, that uh, is used to study uh, biology. And uh, we're able to even calculate magnification. Now, I'm going to begin from here today. And let me begin uh, the slide show. Uh -huh. Uh, let me begin the slide show. Okay, so you can see the tools that we normally use. Uh, we have a hand lens. Normally it's made up of just uh, a convex lens, which they put in a frame. Uh, now this is a frame and you can use it to magnify. You can see these were short, uh, were tiny words which you couldn't see, but when you use a hand lens, you are able to see. So. We normally use it to examine insects. For example, if you have a housefly, uh, you know houseflies may be small. Now, how are you able to see that housefly has hairs on its abdomen? We use a hand lens to see that a housefly has hairs. 
or how are you able to see those spiracles on the house fly? Huh? We use the hand lens to see that it has spiracles, or even if it has wings. Can you draw its wing? We use a hand lens to draw the details of the wing and everything. So it's a very important tool. Or even maggot, like last year in UNEB, they set for them uh, a maggot and a, and a tadpole. So for you to examine the features of a maggot, you had to have uh, a hand lens, a hand lens, okay? So we can now go to, I'm um, just reminding you of how we calculate magnification. Uh, okay. Um, just to remind you uh, that magnification re refers to how much larger the object appears compared to its real size. And um, for example, you can be told to do something and I will show you. So this is the formula which we use and that magnification is equal to image size over object size. And I told you that we you can abbreviate it as MIA or, or MIO, uh, MIO, whereby M stands for magnification will equal to image size, I stands for image size over the actual actual means uh, that object which you are, which they have given you or if you don't want to call it actual you can call it object size that's me and you can see this question saying that uh, calculate the magnification of an object which is 10 centimeters tall whose image appears to be 20. so you write the the, the formula so you know that the image they have told you it is 20 you write it there and then um uh, it's actual, or the object size is 10. So you divide and you get your what to. And um, I remember this is the last slide where we ended, whereby they can give you uh, like this picture of a mango and they tell you uh, to draw like, in practical. This information is so important in practical. And they tell you to draw a well labeled drawing of a specimen, okay, in the space below state your magnification so you are supposed to draw this uh, this this mango using your pencil because we actually use a pencil when we are drawing uh, after drawing uh, you are supposed to write your magnification on the lower right corner by writing an x and then the magnification which you've got and i told you that we use a ruler so you can get a ruler uh, and then you place it you place it there uh, to you know my ruler has those markings of centimeter millimeter so I'm assuming it is six remember me uh, me means the magnification is equal to image size over actual so image size uh, is this one which you have drawn so you put a ruler also on your drawing uh, to see what you have drawn I'm assuming you've gotten six centimeters, okay? And then the actual, let's say, it was, let's say, over five centimeters. So you divide five, one. Uh, by, by, by six, you get one point something. Let's say 1.2. But normally, uh, we leave out these small, small points, and then we just take the whole number. So you come here and you put time as one. That's how we calculate from the drawing. And then uh, another, another instrument that we normally use is that one of, uh, called a microscope. I think it is the most important, one of the most important because it enables us to see uh, life uh, that cannot be seen by our naked eyes. And there are two types of microscopes. We have the electron microscope, uh, which uses a beam of electrons. So it is this one here. This is what we call an electron microscope. Um, so uh, Navatko is saying, teacher, I did not complete the notes for magnification. Teacher, repeat. Now, uh, the notes are already uploaded. I, I uploaded these, uh, these notes in the Google Classroom. 
last week. They're already there. So you don't need to copy from here when I'm teaching. If you need the notes, please go to the Google Classroom. You'll be able to find the notes. It has introduction to biology and microscopy. That's the title and uh, uh, it is there. You'll be able to see it. So um, this is what I call an electron microscope. It is very large. You need a, a, a room, a large room to place it there. And it is extremely expensive. In Uganda, actually, we don't, we didn't have one of late. I, I, I think it is this last month, uh, Makere University just ordered, imagine they have just ordered for this uh, microscope to be, to be brought here in Uganda. That is uh, Makere University. But we didn't have it. We didn't have it uh, in Uganda. But now we have, they're going to bring it. It needs someone who is highly specialized and trained to operate it. If you have not uh, studied so much, you can't operate it. Uh, someone is saying, I'm very fast, I'm not understanding. Okay, let me try to put down the speed. Uh, someone, thank you for that comment. Um, I was still telling you <clears throat> that um, this is the electron microscope, okay? Uh, this is the electron microscope that we are looking at. Uh, Alum is saying, do we write the notes from the Google Classroom to the book? If you need these notes, yes, you can uh, either, you can get them from the Google Classroom and then you write them. And then uh, someone, okay, there's no one who is having the hand up. Okay. And then uh, Philip forgot Google, class, Google Classroom code. The admin will be, uh, giving you the code again if you forgot it. Uh, share pounds. Shadik pounds, please ask. Teacher, teacher can yes. you please go back about the manga? I've not understood. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going, there's the next slide when I'm looking at the book, okay, I'll go back. Thank you. And then uh, I tell five. Shall you repeat? I have not understand. Okay, I'm going to repeat. Okay, and then Adela. Adela Treasure is. Yes. Are you hearing me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. What about the microscope? Microscopes that the doctors use in hospitals, for example, in, in Fort Porter, in Vane Hospital, they use an, an, it's like an electric microscope. They use it and connect it to the computer. And so the microscope reads and it takes it to the computer. Okay, Is it the you. same with, the, with this elect, electron microscope? Okay, thank you, Adela, for that question. Uh, I'm going to answer. Okay, now uh, Adela, that uh, that microscope, the, those microscopes which they use uh, in in a hospital, they are actually light microscopes. Now the first versions we are looking like this one, which here, which is here in the picture, and for them they used this normal sunlight, uh, the normal sunshine, whereby you can see that there is a uh, a reflector mirror here that reflects light to go through. Uh, the specimen, uh, which is normally placed here on the stage. But now, as technology went on advancing, they placed uh, uh, a, a, a bulb. So they modify those microscopes down. I think I, I maybe I'll show you some picture uh, as we are learning. They modified them down here and they put a, a bulb. They put a bulb and you can even connect it to electricity uh, via a socket. And you can even connect uh, a computer, and it can uh, and a camera uh, can be able to read. Uh, so those are modified light microscopes, and uh, be able to observe live specimen. That's why when you are sick and let's say you are having plasmodium, plasmodium is the parasite which causes uh, malaria in your blood. 
So they pick your blood sample, they put it on a glass slide here, and they're able to see them and their shape, uh, the doctor is able to see them. But with this electron microscope, you, you cannot use it to view uh, a live specimen. The specimen must be dead, that's number one. They even preparing the specimen to be placed in this microscope. It needs some special technicality. It needs some special technicality. And for them, they have a very high uh, resolving power. Resolving power means that ability to distinguish between two closed objects. Like you can easily see more detail compared to the light microscope. And uh, for example, you cannot see a virus using uh, this light microscope. Even that, uh, like Adela, the, the, the microscope, which is in that hospital in Fort Porto that you've said, they cannot use it to see a virus because a virus is way too small to be seen by that microscope. But it can see bacteria and some organisms called protists. But this one can see a virus if it is well. They can see it and its structure, and then they can modify it on computer. Okay? So this is a very expensive... The, actually, this microscope alone can buy that. Uh, you may find when it can buy that hospital. Uh, Treasure, you have some other question? Yes, Treasure. Sir. Adela. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sir. Yes, please ask. What about if, if it is not found, if it, ha, it, is, it has not been found in Uganda, asking if it is not found in Uganda, and then you say that, the, and then you say that the light microscope does not see virus, how do they check? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think I've got you. Uh, I'm going to answer you much as uh, the network is not so good. Uh, yes. Or oh, Poi Isaiah. Poi Isaiah. Yeah. Yes, teacher. I've Please not ask. understood. Eh? This hey. microphone here, yeah, does it use electricity or it doesn't use it? Which one? Down on the left. The electron microscope. No. This one, eh? Yes. Hey, okay, I'm going to answer. Thank you. Okay, now this this one here on the picture which you are seeing, this one does not use electricity. Okay. But there are some versions. For example, uh versions i mean like there are some tvs which have those big stomachs i think some of you uh could be having them at home but there are tvs which are flat screen now these are two different versions of tv okay, okay but uh, these ones have higher technology the flat screens so likewise even in microscopes we have those ones which have higher advanced technology uh, and I will show you the picture of one which is modified, which you can even in those good hospitals, okay? But now this one does not use electricity, but there are some that use electricity. But this one must use electricity. It doesn't even use light to see. Uh, I'm afraid it uses electrons to see. Uh, and then now we're saying, teacher, what is the use of a microscope apart from enlarging image? Okay, uh, we shall be looking at that. Apart from enlarging, which other use then Phoebe is saying, not hearing on it, please. Yeah, who, me? People are hearing me then. Thanks, teacher. You have helped me know how to use my home microscope. Oh, that is very good. Uh, we shall keep on uh, knowing that. Uh, so the compound light microscope is this one that you are seeing here. And I'm going to teach you how to use it, this compound light microscope. Uh, but this one, I also don't know how to use it, uh, and very few people. And even after, let's say, Makere is, 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 is importing it, so it's in plans of importing it, because it costs billions of shillings. It is very expensive. 
And after they brought it, they will have to even take people for training. You can imagine, they have to take people for training on how to use it. So it is very sophisticated, even uh, preparing the samples to be placed here. Uh, so you, you can't use it without electricity. Uh, it is very expensive. Uh, you need uh, expertise to run it, to operate it. But this one, it is easy to operate. It can be operated without electricity. And it is cheap, it is portable, but this one is not even portable. It needs a room, a large room, where to operate it from, okay? Um, so we can continue. You've seen the differences. And if you have been understanding, have you understood? Uh -huh. Uh, which uh, uh, which differences can you remember from what I've just discussed to you by looking at this picture? Mm? So we need some differences. Now this is one modified form. Uh, this is one modif one modified form which you may find in some hospitals, which has an inbuilt light inside here at the base, but still remains it is a light microscope. Uh, Evan is saying that teacher, I didn't understand the, I think, microscope. Then Prosy is saying, can they see corona using it? And then, okay, Prosy, actually, uh, you cannot, you cannot, with this light microscope, you cannot see corona because corona is a virus, okay? That says, uh, commonly known as coronavirus, it, it, it can't see. Uh, corona using this, and uh, but you can see that virus using this one, okay. But uh, just like a data question that uh, he asked, he asked, she asked, um, how do they, uh, how are they able to see now viruses, for example, HIV virus or corona? How are they able? Now they use some other technique of uh, identifying or. Yes, identifying what they call antibodies from someone's body. So they use antibodies to detect uh, the virus in someone, but they don't use a microscope to see it. They use another technique of seeing the antibodies. And then, thank you very much, sir. But how come we go to hospitals, they are able to diagnose when we have viral infections? I've already told you that viral infections, they use, uh, when you get a, a Timothy, when you get a viral infection, hmm, your body responds by producing what they call antibodies to fight the virus. Now in the hospital, they detect those antibodies produced by your body to fight the virus, but they don't see the virus itself. That is the technique that they use. They detect the proteins, or you can call them antibodies, produced by your body to fight off the virus because when you get a viral infection, your body uh, responds by producing what they call antibodies against it. So the doctors detect the antibodies, not the virus itself. And then, um, as I was saying, light microscope can't see a virus, but electron microscope can. Yes, that is true. And electron microscope, they even there is one even which is more advanced called the scanning electron microscope. It can see more detail. Some can even zoom in zoom in up to the atom. Then Opoi Op 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 is saying, why can't you see a virus using the light microscope? I'm going to answer you. Um, now the light microscope uh, has a, a called Um, so 
for that. I hope you can hear me. I was still telling you that um, light has a minimum wavelength that it can use, uh, it's limited, that it can use to see. So it has a, a, a range in which it can see objects. But now this one does not use light to see. It uses a beam of electrons. Now, um, for this level, I don't know how I can explain to you electrons, but there are some kind of special particles, if I can call them, uh, that can be used to see. If you want to see how uh, maybe uh, the power of some of those particles, I want you to get a ruler. I think you all know those set rulers. And then rub this ruler on your cloth. You rub it on your cloth and then get small pieces of paper and place them somewhere, okay? Now, after rubbing your ruler, bring this ruler close to the papers you see that there is some force which is pulling the what? Um, the papers to, to get stuck onto the ruler. Okay, you see that there are some papers. Now, that is some kind of energy which you can't see, but you, you can feel it, okay? And then uh, Twina is saying, how will I get the work? It is already there uh, on the Google Classroom. Agaba is saying, how does light affect light microscope? And then Timo Gans, why were they able to see people with COVID? Uh, COVID, I've already told you, they use, they detect antibodies produced by your body after getting that infection. And then a light microscope uses sunshine, while electron microscope uses, uses electrons. Yes, Tracy, that is one difference. Thank you. Uh, between, now we are looking at differences between a light microscope and uh, uh, an electron microscope. Uh, let me pick some people here. Uh, Rita Nakaima, are you giving me a difference? Yes, I've asked you to mute. Rita Nakaima, can you please give your answer? Okay, maybe, um, let me, Timoth Timothy, Klaikas, Kla 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 yes, Timothy? Yes, teacher, uh, I was asking that uh, which type of lenses and beams are used in these microscopes? Which type of? Of lenses, eh? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, this one uh, normally uses some convex lenses, but uh, this one, it has, uh, it doesn't, it uses some special, special electrons which, which are emitted a, uh, which are emitted, and then they, they, there is a, a mechanism which I, which is very complicated, which I don't want to over-explain. Uh, and then let me see, uh, Prosy and family, which question? The yes, difference. Prosy. Yes. The Uh, well, okay. the electron microscope can see the virus. Okay, thank you uh, for that. Then zoom in. Uh, when I ask you to animate, you animate very fast and you say your, your answer. Yes, Sumin. So Sumin so is not unmuting. Is Sozi Jesse. Yes, Sozi Jesse. Yes, teacher. An electron magnet requires a big room for to to do its its to do to to use it while an a light a light microscope requires a a little room for, for it to work or for use. Okay, thank you. Yes, that is uh, some good observation. This one needs a, a larger room. This one is portable. This one is not even portable. Okay, thank you, Jesse. Uh, then there's Ruth Namusoke. Okay. 
Come again. Okay, thank you for that. Yes, uh, this one uh, is cheap. Uh, the light microscope is cheap, but uh, the electron microscope is expensive. Uh, thank you for that. Then uh, I'm seeing patients. Yes, patients. Oh, uh, patience is quiet. Uh, let me get Martha Auma. Yes, Martha. So a late microscope, a late, a late microscope has lenses well, and electron microscope has no lenses. Okay, thank you for that. Uh -huh. Then um, uh, Paul Ricky. Paul Ricky. A light microscope uses a beam of light, while an electron microscope uses a beam of electrons. Uh -huh. That is a very good uh, answer. Yes, this one uses electron, uses a beam of electrons. Uh, but uh, a light microscope uh, uses um, uses a beam of, of light. Okay, so uh, there are very many uh, answers. Teacher, I'm not seeing anything on the screen. You first log out and rejoin again, you'll see. And then are uh, the lenses in a light microscope the same as the ones of handy lens? Uh, yes, kind of, but the other ones, are, uh, they make them specially with special thickness and well calibrated. A, to see a higher magnification. Uh, the other one normally has a, a, a little magnification power. The, the, the lens, the hand lens normally has up to times, uh, times 15. It can magnify up to times 15, but you know these ones can magnify uh, higher. So uh, you've been able to mention the three differences between electron microscope and the light microscope. That is good. Uh, now we are going to understand this light microscope in detail. Uh, we are going to understand it in detail. Uh, Mel, you're saying, teacher, me, you raise the hand and then if you have a question, you can type it and then I can always uh, uh, choose you. Uh, Shidisha is saying you are now getting men. An electron microscope cannot see living specimen. Well, yeah, this is, Shadik, this is a very nice observation also. An electron microscope cannot see living specimen, but the light uh, microscope can. Uh, and that is another difference. Then the electron microscope need trained personnel, unlike the light. Yes, you need special trained personnel for an electron microscope. And I think you've seen it. That, thank you very much, guys, for those answers. Uh, they are very nice answers. So we can look at the compound uh, light microscope. It is called so because it uses a beam of light to view objects and has more than one convex lens. So normally you'll have a lens here on top, okay? Uh, and they are normally used in hospitals and also in schools, okay? You can see, uh, I got this picture uh, of Mulago Hospital. For some of you have not been there. This is how Mulago Hospital looks like. And um, you can see some doctors here who are coming from, from, from the hospital. So they use some of these microbes also in schools. I think you have seen some of these in, in your schools. Now you can see that there's a difference between the microscope and this microscope. Now this is this was one of the first ones. Hey, remember the first microscope was made in those 1800s, 18, 1800s, 1870 something. But now see, there are some that are, they have kept on modifying them and modifying them. Now, this is a modified one for school, but there are some modified ones for hospital, okay? Um, uh, Jonathan Semwanga says, you have a question, please type your question or raise the hand and you ask. Then Opio is saying, how many types of light microscopes are used? I don't, I can't say that there are many types, 
but they're just different models depending on the company. A company can design a one, the, you can find companies designing to way and some designing it like this. Are you seeing that? Now this one has some special bulb inside that uh, when you switch on the light, uh, on the switch from the electricity, that bulb is turned on and then you're able to see. But this one does not need electricity. And then uh, can light microscope see live specimen? Yes, it can see live specimen. Actually, most of the time it sees. If you are suffering from malaria, they can see those malaria parasites and they are normally still alive when they are seeing them in a microscope. Uh, okay. Uh, some people are having their hands. Uh, Lillian. Yes, Lillian. Tisha. Uh, yes. Hello. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, please. Please ask. Reason is why uh, why a microscope is used to science. Tisha. Okay, thank you for that. Yes? Yes. Have you heard? Okay. Yes, yes. I think you read uh, that question in in one of in the notes which I posted, uh, reasons why uh, scientists uh, use um, the microscope. Now, I want us to discuss that question, reasons as why scientists use it, uh, use the microscope. Uh, is it only to magnify? Now, there are very many reasons, and I want us to first understand uh, the microscope as it is. And then uh, we can now be able to discuss the reasons as to why. Uh, Jonathan saying, teacher, from, um, you can always ask questions uh, box to the teacher or uh, in the group which was created. Look from your, your own in their notes, as well as quizzes. Uh, I can set a quiz uh, or, or tests assignments, and then you can be able to do, and then I can mark. Uh, let me just pick one more question and then I go to the next slide. Is infinite infinite hot eight? Uh, please ask. Uh, when I unmute you, you unmute and then you ask me first. Okay, you have no question. Okay, um, uh, we can continue. Uh, now, this is the light microscope in detail. Now, a light microscope has this upper part where you, you come and place your eye. I'm assuming that that is your eye. Okay, now this is what they call an eyepiece lens. Now, this eyepiece lens is held by a barrel. This is what they call a barrel. Okay, and um, it has an arm. An arm in Uganda or Mokono, an arm, you can see uh, it comes from there and it has a base. Uh, this is its base or microscope foot, or you can just call it a base where it sits. Um, then after the barrel, uh, on the side, it has what we call a coarse adjustment. Now this coarse adjustment moves these objective lenses down or up when it is magnifying. This one, when you turn it like this, and you turn it and you turn it, it makes uh, this barrel to move down, and then you are able to come and see. Now, what you're seeing here, these are called objective lenses. They are normally three. Is this one? Is another one? Is another one? Normally behind there, those are called objective lenses. Okay. Now, the magnification is calculated by getting the eyepiece lens times the objective lens. Okay. And you know my these objective lenses are written on them, uh, let's say, times 40 here, okay? And then uh, you can find here on top of this, it is written times, times 10, okay, like that. So, so you can always, uh, you can always get that. Then um, it has a stage where we place the, the specimen. 
specimen means that object you want to see whether it is a bacteria, whether it is something, okay? Uh, then it has this mirror, reflecting mirror, which reflects light. And then it goes through the specimen and then you are able to see up here, you are able to see well. It also has a, a condenser. Now this condenser has a diaphragm. It's not here, but you can't see it. It's normally some kind of uh, something which you can turn. Now a diaphragm uh, normally controls the amount of light that is entering uh, by turning reduce or increase amount of light that is taken up. And we are going to understand uh, one by one. Uh, Jonathan is saying, I'm not hearing you, maybe the network, please accept it, record. Uh, no one has refused you. Uh, then, uh, let me pick some more questions here. Let me pick some more questions from, is Kwesiga. Eh? Is it different from the other one? Okay, Kwesiga, you have a question. But Sam, the, the first page before going to the component microscope, they were talking about the compound light microscope being found in some industries and I think that in some industries, how would it how would it work in some industries that they are talking? What's the use of them in in the simple English? What of those micro of those microscopes? Yeah of the scopes in the industries. Okay. Okay, thank you for, for that question. Thank you for that question. Um, let me pick another. Let me pick another. Yes, Gideon. Teacher, what is the use of the fine adjuster? What is the use of a fine adjuster? Uh, okay, uh, that is a good question. Uh, then Kabali. I have a question. What is the difference? Uh, is a difference between a hand lens and a microscope? Because all of them, they can make something to become big, magnified. Okay, thank yeah. you uh, for that question. Uh, and then uh, Paul, Rick, and Matthew, have Matthew. Yes, Matthew, unmute and you ask. Okay, let me first uh, take on those questions. Uh, how are you saying what's the difference between uh, a handy lens and uh, a, a, this light microscope? Now, a hand lens has a limited magnif magnifying power. I've already told you it can have up to times 15. You can magnify something up to 15 times. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. Yes, Matthew. I wanted to answer the other. I wanted to answer the other boy's question about the fine adjuster. Hey, please answer. The fine adjuster brings the specimen into a clear footage. Okay. Okay, thank you, Matthew. Uh, I think you've had uh, the, this fine adjuster. It's like uh, you, you can move the cost adjustment close and then you're able to see the specimen. But sometimes the image is kind of blurred. We use the word blood. Uh, the, the image is not so finely clear. It has some kind of blurriness. The image is not so clear. So we use this fine adjustment to tune the lens so that the image becomes very clear. It makes it very fine. Okay. And then uh, someone asked, uh, 
the use of microscope in some industries. Now, it depends on the type of industry, okay? Yeah, for example, uh, which kind of industry, if you can specify. So different industries have uh, different objectives why they may have uh, a microscope. Mm. Okay, let me first. Yes, Paul Ricky. Teacher, which kind of image is formed by a microscope? What do you mean by which kind of image? Uh, there are many types of images, like a virtual image. Mm -hmm. Now, that's okay. what I wanted to know. Can you give me, apart from virtual image, can you give me another type of image? Uh, magnified okay. image. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Now, uh, the type of image, you find that uh, your, for the light microscope, some images, you see them in real time. Actually, if you have, I have some, maybe I'll show you some of those videos. Uh, if you have a microscope, you can actually even connect a camera here on top. Like you are seeing the real organism in real time. For example, I've seen an amoeba moving uh, and you were able to see the amoeba or amoeba moving on the slide, or you are able to see, there are very many. I think I'll get some time, maybe next week, I'll pay for you some of these uh, images that are captured using this light microscope and you can see them live. Uh, you can see them live. Uh, okay, there is uh, Tasha and Tracy Hanna. Uh, Tasha, Tracy Hanna, can you please ask? Excuse me, teacher. Um, you said that the viruses cannot be shown on the compound light microscope, but what if there's a lot of light? Can it show the virus? Okay. Uh, no, Hannah or Tasha, no, you can't. Light uh, has a, a limited resolving power. However much, because as the scientists started the, uh, advancing the microscope right from 1800s. Uh, they reached a time, they actually tried to build a lens which is very thick, as thick as a tall person. But even if you would uh, make the lens thick and it has a limited resolving power, uh, light, because the major technique of you being able to see the organism is because light is passing through it. And you can't see however thick the lens can be. Uh, light limits them, they can't. And uh, okay, uh, let me pick some more. Is the, uh, Kabali, we finished, Trevor. Yes, Trevor. Uh, I wanted to ask, why is it that whenever you, whenever they tell you to use a light microscope, you have to keep both eyes open. Okay, thank you, Trevor. Hey, thank you for that. Now, uh, depending on the type of microscope. Now, uh, the first. Um, okay, let me get uh, another another slide here. Uh, there is this one, uh, which has just one, uh, one, one eye, uh, one eyepiece. But there are some other microscopes which have like two, uh, which have like two eyepieces. So uh, when you're looking through a microscope, you have your, both of your eyes uh, looking. Now, uh, in most cases, when, some, when a microscope just has one eyepiece, there is a tendency of one wanting to use the other hand to close the eye as, as you are seeing. But uh, technically, it would be good that you don't use that other hand to keep on monitoring uh, uh, using the other hand as you are fine adjusting and then you are holding the, the stage. That's why they normally tell people, no, don't use the other hand to hold the, to hold the eye. But there's nothing special about it. 
Um, Post says what do those x times 40 mean? I'm going to talk about it. What does the light uh, come from? Where does light come from? Uh, okay, I'm also going to comment about it. Uh, okay, where is the barrel found on the microscope? I'm going to show you again. Bring specimen into sharp, clear focus. Is, is it fine adjust or fine adjustment? Uh, okay, do I put the eye direct? You put the eye here on the eyepiece. Now, you can see this eyepiece has times 10. It means that the lens here has a magnifying power of up to 10 times. Okay, now these objectives normally have times 40 if it is medium power because they are normally divided into three. Where we have um, medium power, we also have um, uh, we have medium power, we have low power, we also have high power. Okay, now high power you're able to see more detail, but you see few organisms. Okay. Medium power, it is intermediate. And then low power, you see many organisms and less detail. Uh, for example, you can see when you are, I'm assuming you are put a slide here, you could count up to, let's say, if you're seeing a sample from someone who has been suffering from malaria, you may count, if you're under low power, you may count up to, let's say, 100 plus modium parasites, okay, in a single sample. But if you are using low power, sorry, high power, you may only see two. You may only see two, but with more detail, their shape and everything. And then medium, you, you're going to see like about 40, like that. Uh, this is the barrel here. Uh, the other one who was asking, uh, this barrel, this is the one which is holding uh, this eyepiece, eyepiece lens. This is the cost adjustment or adjust and this is the fine. These are objective lenses. And each one has its own magnifying power. Some have magnifying up power of up to 40. Uh, that is medium or 45 or 50. Some up, have up to 100 magnifying power. Okay? Then the eyepiece normally has times 20. Uh, then or some may have times 15 like that. And then Kwagara is saying, is the lens used in magnifying glasses the same as those used in microscope? Um, no, the one in magnifying glass is, is less, has a lesser magnifying power than these ones. You have seen that normally the one for the glass has up to times 15 maximum, sometimes five, sometimes 10, but these ones may have up to 100, even more. Then in question is saying, how do I direct the reflecting mirror? It you, just like a, a window. You, this thing is flexible. You can turn it anyway. You can even flip it and it rotates. You can turn it and it has this double edge. It has a mirror this side as well as in the back. It has no problem. Uh, let me pick uh, some other question. And then Rest is saying, sir, please show us the the turret, okay, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, it's the one uh, that that turns, uh, if I can show you. Uh, uh -huh. Are you seeing this? This thing can turn, uh, this object it is the one. When you, you, when you turn this thing the other side, this mirror come, uh, sorry, this objective lens moves out of focus and then this one comes next. When you again turn, this one comes like that. So at any one time, when you turn this turret, uh, the, you, you want to use a specific objective lens. That's when we turn it. It is flexible and you can turn it. And then, um, uh -huh. yeah, that is the turret that I've been talking about. You, you can turn it, you use it to turn uh, the, 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 the different uh, objective lenses. And then what do you mean by magnifying power? A magnifying power, that's what Hall is asking then. How I would like to ask on the real page, yeah? on that real page of at hospital. Yes, please ask. Uh, you type the question and then you ask. There's nothing special about this page. 
uh, there were just um, some microscopes here and this one. There's nothing special about it. Uh, if you have a question you ask now, this is the eyepiece, uh, the barrel, you have seen it, which provides support for the eyepiece. Then the nose piece, so the turret uh, is this one. It holds objective lenses, first of all, and it can also be rotated uh, if you want a particular lens to be uh, magnified. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the stage, this is where we normally place. Uh, let me first pick some more questions here. Someone said I should not be moving very fast. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see. There are some people have not yet asked. Uh, uh, Philip. Yes, Philip. Philip, please ask. Teacher, teacher. Yes. Please. Ah, uh, how do you get those jumps? How do you get those jumps? You see, used to what to see? How do you get? Do you get uh, particles? Okay. Thank you, Philip. Uh, how do you get the jumps to see? Uh, now, germs, it depends. Normally, we, we don't use a microscope just for fun. But normally, for example, in hospital, you're going to go there and you, you are sick. Let's say you're having typhoid or malaria, and they'll pick your blood sample. So now they're going to find the germs in the blood sample, which they have picked from you. Or uh, getting, uh, for example, some people, when you go to hospital, they can tell you to they give you a small tin and they go, tell you to go and, and defecate in that tin and you bring to the doctor. So they can pick the germs from the feces also. So it depends on where you want to, uh, or from a wound. There are many sources. Yes, Pontius. Uh, Pontius, you have a question? Yes, I was. Can you hear me? Yes. I was asking. Mm. If they test malaria and they put the germs on the light microscope. Uh -huh. Can, when you're seeing the microscope, can the germs be moving? Do they be moving? Okay, thank you for that question. Uh, okay, I'm going to answer that. Uh, There's Magala, Magala Po. What's the function of the condenser? Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about it. It is even there on the, on the next slide. And then there is a, a patience. Yes, patience. Okay. Uh, then Timothy. Teacher, uh, you say that we have uh, beams. Uh, uh, so we have many beams, like uh, what, what beams are used in these microscopes? Because we have many beams. We have the parallel and other type of beams. So which beams are used in these microscopes? Oh, okay, I'm going to answer that. Uh, let's get another question. Yes, Rachel, ask. Sir, are you hearing me? Yes? Yes, I can hear you. How, how does a, an electro, how, how can an electro, an electro microscope be affected if they apply if they apply light on it okay uh thank you for that question also uh, let me first uh, answer yeah let me first answer that question uh okay now uh, beginning with rachel's question uh ask 
asking how uh, how is the Can I, I how is the electron microscope? microscope? Okay, let me go back to the picture. Be affected. Uh, so you find that uh, check this in this room they had switched on light, and um, uh, sorry for that. Uh, they had switched on like no effect on it. Uh, I don't know may we, whether I'm getting your question well. Uh, now, light, what you must know is that light also has particles, but the light particles may not interfere with the electron particles. Okay, so there's nothing. Whether you switch on the light or you switch off, nothing is going to happen to it. Um, and then um, let me first see some questions here. Ashadiki is saying, what does times 10 mean? Uh, Jacqueline saying, teacher, can you please show the formula and solution of magnification? Uh, we shall go back to it. Apart from getting the germs from the feces, where else can they get them from? They can even pick them from your mouth. They can pick them from anywhere, from, from that water, eh? like that water which is normally on the ground. They can see germs on it. Germs are almost everywhere. Even, uh, even on your hands, there are germs there. Even in your mouth, uh, they can get a cotton swab. They place it in your mouth. They pick germs from it. Uh, they can pick germs. Germs are everywhere. Just know that. And then, excuse me, sir, I request that you talk about a microscope foot. That is the best way it sits. Uh, what is the use of cost adjustment? I've already talked about that. Uh, okay. What do you mean magnifying power? Okay. Uh, remember, we have been saying that uh, with magnification, you are looking at how much uh, bigger or smaller, how much bigger an object has become. Now, uh, magnifying power, you want to see, for example, uh, if you are having an objective lens, uh, let me get to this microscope. Uh, if you are having an objective lens of, let's say, time of Z, 100. The IPS lens may have like time Z, time Z 10. Okay. Now that the magnifying power of this IPS lens and this objective lens is going to be at uh, the total magnification of having this time 10 times 100. So it, it's going to be time 100 capacity. So it has that limit up to that magnify, magnification. It can magnify things up to 1000 times the size of the real object, okay? Uh, how do I get to know that, that that has malaria and that doesn't have malaria? Uh, what is MIA in full? This was my acronym, which I invented. It's not a special thing in notes where magnification is image size over actual size. It's just an acronym, which you can also invent uh, with what lens is used as is in microscope. Is electron microscope used for testing corona? Hey, when I okay, so uh, there was a question. Uh, Matthew is saying I should pick you. I'm going to pick you, Matthew. Uh, teacher, does the electron microscope have a different function from the light microscope? Of course, yeah. I didn't explain the meaning of. Uh, I have not got that. Uh, is, the, is the electron microscope have a different function? Then explain the meaning of all the X. X uh, is a symbol which we use to show how many times something has been magnified. It's like the magnification, actually. It's, it's just time was sign. Okay, uh, there are very many questions, but uh, unfortunately, it is time up. Uh, there are very many questions which you guys have. Uh, teacher, please, my question. I don't remember the question. Uh, but, but, but can you please type the question? I end with your question. Um, okay. So uh, it is because of time. I think you will have to ask more questions next time. Other Otherwise, thank you for being attentive and for the good questions. Uh, goodbye and